and God's favor is not on others. And it might be a new Christian, and he asks God for favor, and immediately, boom, he's, he's got God's favor. And then I know Christians that go to church every Sunday, they read their Bible, they're faithful, and they just don't have God's favor. Why? And you might be one of those people asking, why do I not have God's favor? Well, God's favor is similar to grace, and I'll try to answer that question in my message today to you. It's why some have God's favor and some do not. Did you ever see anybody that had God's favor? You just knew, and everything they did and certain things they did, they were just blessed by. They, God gave them a talent, a wisdom, and a gift, and they're blessed by it. Uh, David was in God's favor. But this morning, if you turn with me over into Proverbs chapter 3, there's nothing like God's favor. Um, and God's favor is good. It's not as good as God's grace, but God's favor is wonderful. And uh, while you're turning there, let's bow our heads in a word of prayer. My Heavenly Father, as we bow our heads before you, thank you for your word. Thank you for your son, Jesus. Thank you for your blessings in the presence of all of us here today. Lord, we just ask you to fill each one. Anoint them, lead them, give them wisdom and knowledge. Help them to grow, to bring glory and honor to your kingdom. There be any here that is lost and undone, that they come to accept you today before it's too late. Lord, just be with me as your messenger. Let me deliver your words you'd have me to speak. Fill me with your spirit. We give you the praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. It says, My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For the lengths of the days and long life, peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck and write them upon the table of thy heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Folks, that's a key. He said, write my commandments on your heart. And let, let not mercy and truth forsake you. Seems like a simple thing to do, doesn't it? And then he says, bind them about your neck. Have them always about you. It's not a question of, am I going to be truthful? Am I going to be honest? It's not a question of, I'm going to do the right thing. I've made that commitment. <clears throat> God has, I made God my choice in my life. And he's told me and he's wrote his tablets and commandments on my heart. And he said, let not mercy and, and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck and write them upon the tablet of thy heart. Then he said, so shall thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. When you do those things, you find favor in man's sight and you find favor in God's sight. And if you're doing those things that God put on your heart and he's given them to you, it's such a blessing to have God's favor on your life. I'll give you an example of something that, I, that I'm aware of. You can go to church, you can do good things, give, poor, give to the poor, tithe, help those in need. And those are all good things. Nothing wrong with those. But you lack God's favor. It's not that you're not doing what that said. But God's favor cannot be bought or earned. It is very similar to salvation God's favor comes by trusting God for what you ask for salvation comes by trusting God to save you you get both the same way you surrender you humble your hearts and you ask God and then you have faith that he saves you or that he brings you favor. 
and doing the good things that God puts in your heart and that you do. But I don't want you to confuse salvation or favor by doing the good things that God asked you to do. You cannot earn salvation. You cannot buy it. You cannot buy God's favor. Folks, it's an anointing and a blessing from God. It comes when you trust God just like you trust Him to save your soul. You're sick. You don't know how you're going to get over it. <clears throat> and you do yet, and you manage how. God's favor. You trusted Him. Small thing that I, about it, but there's, for me, I'll share this with you. God laid it on my heart for a Christmas cantata. I'm thinking, how's this going to happen? Don't have the answer, God. But you said it, and I trust you. And I'm trusting God. So I talked to Sister Sila. Well, she's got a tight schedule, but she, she, it worked. I thought, well, can't have the cantata without Diane playing the piano. How's that going to work? Then I talked to this one, and this one's busy, and that one's busy, and I'm like, golly, God, how are we going to do this? I know y'all are busy, but if you're here, maybe we can stay in practice again after a while. Give me an example. Trust God to do those things that are right. Now, I'm also trusting God. It's going to be a wonderful service. He gave me glimpses of all this already. Did Tim Love know that? Can Tim Love work out your schedules? No. But I serve a God that does. And when you do what God asks you and you trust Him, He brings favor on your life. <clears throat> Give you another example. We'll look to the scriptures, and I got other things I'll try to share. But in the book of Genesis, we can recall a man named. Noah, I believe it's Genesis chapter 8. And God had told him to prepare an ark. And you know what the Bible said? It was accounted unto him for grace. But it didn't say, but it showed that God gave him favor. He allowed him to build the ark. He allowed him to save his family. And you know how he got it? Not by working. Yeah, you have to work and trust God and follow through. You can't say, well, I trust God and sit there and don't do nothing. Trust God to show you the way. I suppose nobody had ever built a boat before. Noah trusted God and he gave him wisdom on how to do it. He trusted God enough that not only, did he, not only did he build a boat, he built a boat on dry land. Not only did he build a boat on dry land, he built it for a long time. And it took a lot of work and a lot of dedication. But had he done all the work and all the dedication and he never trusted God, it would have never happened. The good works are good but the key is you've got to trust God as you carry out the plan. Because if you don't trust God, you're going to give up and quit. You say, no, well, I, I, I trust God. I, I got it. Oh, yeah? So did Abraham and Sarah. Oh, you're going to have a, you'll be a father of many nations. You're going to have a child. I trust God. Sure. How much do you trust God? You know, you can get in situations when it, there is no answer. Your mind's not going to figure it out. God had it figured out before he asked you. Your life, your health, your day-to-day -day living. God brings that favor to each one of us, y'all. It's not occasionally. 
And he does that when you trust him with your life. <clears throat> yeah, everybody trusts him for salvation and hope that he's there and hope that that... Folks, walking with God is trusting God on a daily basis, that he sustains you, that he gives you the wisdom to do what you do. We studied in Sunday school where God gave them the wisdom to be craftsmen. God's giving you wisdom daily to carry out your life that you make it as you make it in your life. No, it may not be what you want. It may not be when you want. But folks, keep trusting God. It comes to pass. Just like Abraham and Sarah. Yeah, they trusted God and it was accounted unto him as righteousness. And, it, and he got God's favor. But folks, it doesn't always happen overnight. It doesn't happen today. It might happen tomorrow. It might happen next week. I've trusted in God for things for 20 years. It's just now coming to pass. Did I do it? No. I thank God for the favor he's put upon me and my life and my family and my church family. As the church grows, as you grow, as you walk daily in God, you've got to trust him. When you stop trusting God for the answers of your life, the favor comes off of you. When America quits trusting God, God's hand of favor goes away. You know what the beautiful thing about it is? When you start trusting God, his favor comes back. When America starts trusting God, his favor comes back. They say, oh, it's such a mess, it can't be fixed. Folks, I serve a God that can fix anything. I serve a God that raises the dead. I serve a God that has eternal life. I, have, I serve a God that created all this universe. I serve a God that created the heavens and the earth. I serve the God that I am, that is the great I am. Folks, it excites me when you can trust God and you see him working in your life. You may not like some things that come your way, but watch what he does when his favor comes upon you. Oftentimes use it, but let's go over let's go over the, how how to activate your favor. Let's go over in the book of Esther. It's not an often used book, and I don't study it a lot. Very seldom, in fact. It's hard for me to find, but I'm gonna try to find the book of Esther here. Maybe it's right there before Psalms. <clears throat> In the book of Esther, chapter 4, verse 15. It says, then Esther bid them return Mordecai this answer. Nope, that is not it. But she had sent an answer back to Mordecai. And in verse 13 it says, And Mordecai commanded to answer Esther, Think not with thyself that thou shalt escape the king's house more than all the Jews. But God made a way for her. And she trusted the Lord. And then in, in Psalms, if you go with me to Psalm 68. She had trusted the Lord. Will you trust the Lord? Psalm 68, 19. Blessed be the Lord who daily loadeth us with benefits, even the God of our salvation. God loads us daily with benefits. You may not think so. But he's given you the life that you have and he gives you the victory through Christ Jesus. That we're overcomers. What have you overcome in your life? What situations? Bad, good, sin? 
whatever it was, all of us have overcome something, and a lot of somethings. But when God's favor is upon you, you can overcome the small things that are important to you, the big things that are important to you, and the way you know that God has favor come upon you and you overcome it, it's because there was no way you could figure it out. There's no way I could figure out a time. There's no way I could figure out how. There's no way I could get everybody. But I'm not smart enough. But I serve a God that is. And when you're facing those situations in life, God's favor comes upon us. His favor is different than His grace. His grace is abundant. And He supplies it to all. But His favor comes when you trust in Him in His grace. Then His favor comes upon you. Big difference. David was fat after God's own heart. And God had said, I'm going to anoint you king. And, then, and as he was king, his brothers... He was pushed aside constantly. He was constantly away in the away from them. But God had a favor to place upon his life. And when he asked David and he told David he would be anointed king, he trusted God. Folks, you're each one divinely created by an almighty God for a purpose. Trust him with that favor on your life and that purpose. It's not yours, it's not going to be mine, and mine's not going to be yours. And I, I can see your favor, I can see my favor. Can you see your favor that God has put upon you? With your family, with your homes? In Romans chapter 4, verse 17... passage that you undoubtedly know. He says that it, and he's talking about Abraham, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God who quickened the dead and called those things which be not as though they were. Folks, God changes things. They can change from the way they are to the way that he makes them. You can't. And you can't earn it. But when you submit to God and you trust him, the favor comes upon your life. It's not anything you do, but what God does for you in your life. And yes, you need to worship the Lord. Yes, you need to stay in the Word. Yes, you need to be saved. And you can do all those things. But if you stop trusting the Lord to do those things which you can't see how they're going to happen, they'll never happen. We must trust in God to receive that favor. Then go with me in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 6. To the praise of the glory of His grace, wherein He hath made us accepted in the Beloved. Here, to the praise of the glory of His grace. His grace is wonderful, His grace is sufficient. His grace is well appreciated in my life. When you take grace and you lay favor on top of it, it takes you to the next level with God. The level that God wants you to expect from Him. And in return, if you love me, keep my commandments. 
And if you love the Lord and you like the grace and you like the favor, God will give you enough grace to overcome the circumstances so you can receive his favor. It's not something, where you have to make up your mind is, am I trusting God with everything in my life? Am I trusting him with every detail in my life? Not just on Sunday, not just if I'm fishing, not just if I'm working, not just if I'm paying bills, not just if I'm sick. Folks, God's favor takes care of everything. His grace takes care of your eternity. His favor takes care of your life here on earth. Do you ever see somebody that, you, that could step in a pile of cow manure and come out smelling like a rose? <laughs> kind of sad, probably an analogy. But I step in cow manure. By God's favor, I come out smelling like a rose. So will you. We step in cow manure or something worse. But God can turn that cow manure into a rose. In fact, I put cow manure on my garden. It turns into tomatoes and cucumbers and green beans. <laughs> <laughs> but not by my will, by the hand of God and his creation. He can make it dry and blow away because remember Job? Oh, Job was so excited. He got, man, he had him a nice gourd and he had a nice shade. And the heat come and blowed up. And he was more concerned about the little gourd than he was a nation to come to repentance. What did God do? He took the favor of the gourd away. Doesn't mean Job wasn't saved. Doesn't mean Job was no longer under grace. He was no longer under God's favor. Folks, you can go through life and doesn't mean you're not saved. It doesn't mean you're not going to church. It doesn't mean you don't do good things means you're not trusting God and His favor comes off. And you're not keeping His commandments and your heart's not right. My question to you is, if you want God's favor, trust God with everything. If you're happy with the way your life is, continue on. But you're not happy. If you don't know Jesus Christ today as your Lord and Savior, you may think you're happy, but you're missing out on so much. Because happiness doesn't come through worldly pleasures, lustful desires, or prideful thoughts. It comes by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. God's favor comes the same way. By grace through faith in Jesus Christ, but it goes a step further by trusting God to lead your life. David trusted God to lead his life. Abraham trusted God to lead his life. Noah trusted God to build an ark. Abraham trusted God when it came time to offer sacrifice. Or not Abraham. I've lost that, but anyways, you've got to trust God to provide. And he does it in his time. But sometimes, as a church, as an individual, the favor of God falls upon you. And you know it. When the favor of God falls upon our nation, we know it. When the favor of God, there's nothing, it, it, it's spirit-filled, it's grace-filled, <coughs> and it's promise-filled. And even though things are bad, and, you don't, and they may be bad for a long time, when God touches you, it changes everything. You remember when Lazarus died? They were weeping and mourning. <coughs> And, and Jesus took his sweet time about getting there, didn't he? He was already stinking, he said. 
And when he laid the hand of favor upon Lazarus, he raised him from the dead. Folks, God's hand of favor will do the same in your life. Trust him and believe him. Let us stand and we'll have a song of invitation. <clears throat> As they're coming to play, I'm going to give you another example of favor. Remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego went about doing about what they're supposed to do? They wouldn't eat the king's food. They wouldn't bow to the king. And so, there was a day of judgment come upon them. It said they cast them in a fire. But even in the fire, the hand of God protected them with a hand of favor. Folks, so it doesn't matter what it is. Trust God for His hand of favor in your life as you walk it. Let us sing. Number 85. <laughs> shall be called holy unto the Lord. And he is, and he also made a statement in Luke 1 and 50, 1. He has showed strength with his army. He has scattered the proud and the imaginations of their heart. He has put down the mighty from their seats and exalted them of low degree. God will exalt you as long as you will humble yourself. He'll exalt your family. He'll exalt your situation. Let's sing one more verse. <laughs> blessing you I pray you seek God's favor and a lifestyle that will receive it in faith and trust in Christ Jesus uh, we'll be dismissed in a word of prayer and then we'll go into choir practice um, Donnie would you dismiss us in a word of prayer please you heavenly father we just thank you for uh, your word this morning, Lord, and we, and we do praise you for your favor in our lives, Lord. I hope, Lord, is the closer we can draw to you, the more your favor will be upon us, Lord. And I don't think we can ever get too close to you, Lord. But we appreciate you. Thank you for Brother Tim bringing your message here today, Lord. Pray for everyone 